welcome to Libra season and this time we're creating a cute boy. As usual, I've got everything in the Pinterest board, so let's go through. Can I just say, I am so excited for the October art challenge this year. That's what all of these pieces are from, but they do kind of go through the page. That looks weird. Libra. Let's learn about Libras. I mean, firstly, the colors are a little bit odd. It says pinks, pastel purples, and yet there's also green and yellow. So I don't know what that's about. The ruling planet is Venus, and the element is air. That's a weird shape. We're definitely not gonna include that. Ooh, the crystal is lapis lazuli. If only I could afford some lapis lazuli paint. That would be so cool to include. This is the symbol, and the archetype is the scale. Libras have quite a variety of traits. Polite, sociable, charismatic, sensitive, balanced, caring. That all kind of makes sense. But then there's indecisive, escapist, impartial, elusive, vain, the empathetic. They've got quite a bit. I don't really know how to take that. My partner is a Libra and all I've heard this entire time is that Libra is the most boring star sign. Then we need to make this one interesting. More so because the Libra is balanced and it doesn't really have a lot to it, so we need to make this fun. It's a good colour palette. I like the colour palette. It's these. Art inspiration. This one's pretty cool. I like that they've got the scales, but I don't know if I'll be including that. This one's a little witch. This one's cool again with the scales. So I guess there's not much art for Libra. The question is, do we want to include the scales? Because it is a little bit on the nose. There's no way to fit some scales in and make it look not weird. As for the actual reference, Pinterest wasn't very helpful again because it's just full of AI. This is the person that we're trying to do. How are we gonna fit them into this though? What if they're holding the scales behind them kind of like that? Let's get sketching, let's see if we can do this. Yes, I did just take a photo of myself. <laughs> ah, no. The anatomy might be slightly different for somebody else, but you know, it's fine. Okay, you just gotta use your imagination for this. Maybe we actually wanna pop the hand a little bit higher, because we kind of want this to be like just at the top here. We're gonna loosely follow this, because we're using my pose for this. Okay, we need a proper jawline. <laughs> this looks so scary. <laughs> Ah, oh, this guy's got better lips than me. I don't tend to do men, so I'm not sure what their jawline looks like. I think they have quite a big jawline. And then, oh, I quite like the blazer idea. Yeah, we could do a blazer. And also, where does that then happen? I don't know. We'll figure that out later, I guess. This person doesn't have enough head going on. Um, we'll try and improve with the actual sketch. Oh, we could put the symbol on the scales. Would that work? Like, I do like all this botanical look, so we could give that a try. Kind of like, don't know if I would do this in watercolor though. Okay, this is the concept for Libra all done. I'm gonna go work on the sketch now and I'll see you as we're painting and we'll go through the story together. And also we'll go more in depth about Libras and what they actually are. Let's learn some more about Libras. I must admit the information about them is actually very sparse. The smallest I've come across. I guess they're not talked about as often as other star signs. But here's what I could find. Its symbol is the scales, based on the scales of justice held by the Greek god of law, Themis. Themis is the basis of the modern concept of Lady Justice, the blind lady with the scales. Libra is ruled, like Taurus, by the planet Venus. And this gives Libra a romantic attachment. But for Libra, Venus represents more this side of beauty. They're fans of high art, design, and everything aesthetic. The scales of Libra represent balance and as such those born under Libra love symmetry. The aesthetic nature of balance is something that they're drawn to. 
almost to a point of obsession. Their need for a sense of balance often leads Libras to apply logic to more emotive situations. This intellectualism combined with their love of beautiful things means Libras have a talent for critique, often becoming art critics and stylists. The romantic impact of Venus and the need for balance from the scales combine to make Libras very quick to form attachments or to keep people at a distance. The balance in a Libra can often come across as dualistic. They will naturally be people pleasing, jumping from one person's need to another, making them quite diplomatic since they just want balance between all parties. This can lead to issues within relationships as they often seek to keep everyone happy, which can end up detrimental for themselves. Libras are often incredibly passive, avoiding conflict and confrontation at all costs. This is again due to their obsession with balance. Being an air sign, they require constant stimulation, as air symbolizes change in astrology. This constant mental stimulation further pushes them to seem intelligent because they are just naturally curious. You'll find they know a little bit about everything since this balance gives them satisfaction. One fun fact about a Libra is that when the constellations were being witnessed and organized, the scales of Libra were actually a section from the next zodiac sign, the Scorpio, with Libra being one of the Scorpion's claws. This means that Libra is the shortest of the constellations and some say that it doesn't actually truly exist as its own thing, which may explain why it's the odd star sign out being the only object. Libra seems to be a bit of an amalgamation of many traits, which gives us a lot of options when it comes to creating Libra and their story, which is amazing. We can run with this, let's go. Libra isn't a bad person, but nor is he good. He isn't a fighter, nor a great scholar, but Libra does have a talent though. He can talk, almost too well. As a boy, Libra was popular, but not exactly reliable. Everyone liked him, they instinctively liked him, though when asked about him, they all realized they didn't actually know a single thing about him, only that he was always there to say the right thing and do what was needed. Nothing was too much trouble for Libra. Not a single bad word was ever spoken about the boy. Sure, the richer kids found him a lot more helpful, but even the less fortunate liked him, and that's how he liked it. Libra was an orphan, his parents were part of a traveling circus roaming from town to town where he picked up the natural instincts as a salesman and con man. As he grew up, he left the confines of performing life and decided to go at it solo. In the beginning, he got into trouble, consistently getting in over his head. Though this wasn't a bad thing for young Libra. As he got into more and more trouble, he learned how to evade and elude. Soon, he became as prolific as the most notorious gang leaders, but to be honest, local law enforcement didn't really care. He never had the same name, never hit the same targets, no one was ever hurt, and not much damage was ever done. So what if a couple of candlesticks and jewellery went missing from the Lord's manor? The Lord was selfish and constantly stole from the poor. And it's not like the locals would help them. When the guards questioned the local innkeepers on information about Libra, they only ever said that he was charming, kind, great with kids, and tipped well. On top of that, even when they managed to corner him, he always managed to wriggle out, convincing guards to look the other way, charming families to let him hide in their house, or something as simple as he just skipped town. Several days ago, they just missed him. To the law, Libra was just too much of an effort for someone who wasn't really doing that much harm. Eventually, Libra moved away from petty thievery to something more akin to his talents. Moving out to the Great Plains, he set up shop in the capital of a small kingdom. Using all his savings, he purchased a manor, 
a complete wreck. It was supposedly haunted, causing all the locals in the neighborhood to be completely ignored. As a result, crime was left to run rampant and poverty was rife. To Libra, this was killing two birds with one stone. He made his entrance far from his new house, claiming to be a great sage, one that can banish the living dead and talk to those beyond the veil. Of course, Libra could not. In fact, Libra had no magic at all. But that didn't stop people from listening. He helped those in grief, providing comfort to people who had recently lost someone dear, never charging, only healing. As his reputation grew, more people inquired about his skills with banishing ghosts. Libra would happily oblige, for a small fee, of course only if they could afford it. To help with his act, he felt like all good mages, he needed a symbol, something that he could channel his magic through, something for his branding, of course. Libra found an old and ornate brass set of scales. He wired them so he could control them without appearing to touch the pans. The scene was set. Starting small, he would deal with ghosts. And when he would find big problems, a priest would very conveniently learn about it and deal with it before Libra could actually handle the situation. Soon, the old haunted manor was brought to him. Libra, having owned the manor for some time, knew that there were no ghosts. It was just a bit run down. But this was to be his masterpiece. Gathering all that he'd learnt, he made a big show for all to see. As he entered the house alone, there were screams, flashes of lights, the smell of burning and of sulphur. And after an intense... fight? Libra emerged, bruised and filthy, but triumphant. As a reward, the townspeople rallied around their saviour. They fixed up the mansion, free of charge of course. And with the revamp, order returned to the streets around him. Sure, Libra had conned the town, but he had saved many families from the harsh underbelly of the unfortunate. Libra carried on this ruse. The grieving, rich and poor would come to his manor, and he'd comfort them with a smile, a kind word, and his trusty scales. And that's Libra. He's not especially bad or good, just looking out for himself whilst maintaining balance. I love the colour palette for this piece, it's a really fun combo and I think it fits this character very well. The sketch was made quickly, so unfortunately the anatomy isn't perfect. There are a few things that I would change, but because this is watercolour, you know, we'd have to start from scratch again, it can't be changed now. This is the first character where we've very obviously included their archetype in the piece. It sort of looks a bit odd, but I do feel like it's needed. Libra was probably the hardest to come up with the design for because it has an object, the scales, and this is the only one that has that. Aries is fire and the bull. Cancer is the crab, water, ocean. Leo is a lion. There are lots of ways to incorporate those things into a design and make it part of their personality, but Libra doesn't really have that. So I didn't realize this one was gonna be this difficult until I'd actually read up on it, but it makes sense. The painting is cute, I hope you like it. Thank you for joining me today. If you've missed any characters in this series, make sure to check out the playlist below where I might have already made yours. We're over halfway now, can you believe it? Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the second half of these characters. And if you'd like to get any star sign as a print or sticker, they're all available on my imprint store, which is down below. I'll leave you now for the final reveal. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you again in a few days time. Bye bye.